success in learning, limita terra, and intellectual capabilities. Generally speaking, generally speaking, a person, the greater his intellect, as we would say, a smarter the person, the more likely he is going to be able to succeed in whatever discipline he applies himself to. So a person who has a, a strong natia for mathematics, uh, he's likely to be successful in mathematics. A person who is an interest in science and he has a, a strong intellectual capabilities in science or in economics and business. And generally speaking, and I imagine educators would assess students and say this person's intellectual capabilities are suitable for him to be a doctor or this one to be a lawyer or this one to be a computer scientist, a technician. Is that so by limitator? By limitator is it the same thing? Would a manal make an assessment of a bocher, a talmud, and say, oh, this person has a very good mind, and he is likely to become a big talmud chacham. This person, his intellectual capabilities are a little bit weaker, he's not likely to become a talmud chacham. Does it follow in the same manner, in the same pattern, in the same path as we find by other disciplines? And the truth is that it doesn't. Tyre is different. Tyre is different. We can see this by observation, but primarily the, we can see it because the Gemara says so. And that's how we know, because the Gemara says so. Which Gemara? Well, the famous Gemara in Megillah that says, if a person says, Yagati v'lo mitzati al-tami. If a person says, I tried, and I was not successful, don't believe him. If he says, lo yagati matzati, I didn't try, and I was successful, also don't believe him. Yagati matzati tani. I worked, I toiled, I struggled, and I succeeded, believe him. Now, if you would tell that to an educator, Lahavdal, and tell him, okay, any student in his class that says that I tried and I didn't succeed to be a mathematician. I tried and I did not get into medical school. Well, it's of course, not everybody is able to get into medical school. Not everybody is able to be a scientist. Just because you try, just because you put in effort, you're not cut out for it. You don't have the mental, intellectual aptitude for it. Well, of course not. Not everybody has the brain power to be a computer whiz. Certain people have certain strengths and other people don't. It's not totally dependent on effort, yet by Talmud Torah, Gemara seems to be saying that it depends on effort. And if you didn't put the effort, you might be a genius, but if you didn't put the effort into it, you're not going to succeed. Why not? If you're a genius, there are people who are brilliant who do not have to work hard to succeed in other disciplines. But no, not in Torah. If you didn't work hard, you won't succeed. If you worked hard, you will succeed. And don't say, don't believe a person who says, I really worked hard and I didn't succeed. Well, that's certainly not the case in other disciplines. So what's the difference in Torah? And the more, furthermore, the more says, but that's only in understanding and comprehension. But Lok Megersa, as far as retention, that's Siyata Dishmaya. You need Siyata Dishmaya. Now, in other disciplines, Lahavdil, Elavavdalas, retention, well, again, it depends on his brain power and his intellectual capability. Some people have a very good memory and other people don't. Some people have a photographic memory, other people don't. In Taira, it's Siyata Dishmaya. What does it mean, Siyata Dishmaya? I mean, a person could have a, be born with a certain quality, and he can be born with a very good memory, but the Gemara is saying, no, it's siyata deshmaya, something that you can daven for, it's something that you can ask for and yearn for. So what is the pshat over here? 
Now, in truth, we see this by observation as well. We can observe this. I'm sure that many of you know of no people who were in their younger years were not such great Talmud uh, Chachamim and uh, people in their younger years when they were younger that they uh, did not apply themselves so much to learning or were not considered really capable of any great success in learning and achieving great heights in learning. And yet, some of them, maybe many of them, as they grew older and they applied themselves, became, became remarkable Talmud Chachamim. And there's some fame in Mises with Gedolim that in their younger years their parents maybe gave up hope with them and they, you know, famous Mises with some of the Gedolim and they, they took upon themselves that they were going to learn and became massive Talmud Chachamim. And we see uh, some very, very smart, smart children, smart Bachrim, brilliant in terms of intellectual capabilities, it really did not amount to a lot in, in Talmud Torah. You know, there's a, a Maisa, or a, a Weissmantel Zatzal, said over that the, the gentleman in charge of the, of the library in Oxford University, I think his name is uh, Mr. Cowley, al Koponim, he said about this person that he was brilliant, a genius. He was min umus oila. He was not a yid, but he was brilliant. And he said about him that he was a boki and shas, a boki and shas. And he said to the extent that you can ask him a mention of tesis anywhere in shas, he knew exactly where it was. Brilliant, brilliant person. So in terms of intellectual capabilities, brain raw, brain power, and eloi. And ask him to us anywhere in Shas. But he said, was he a Talmud Chacham? Was he learning Torah? He said, no. And Haraya, and the proof to it is, is that he was never Mechadish a Chiddush in his entire life. He didn't have one Chiddush in his entire life. Baki Bishas. But he couldn't be Mechadish a Chiddush. Because he didn't have Torah. He wasn't learning Torah. It wasn't the mile of tire. It was brain power. But it's not success in Torah. Because he didn't connect himself, couldn't connect himself to the Midat Torah. On the other hand, this Yudua, the famous Maisa, Lahav the of Abdul, so the famous Maisa, the Nitziv, when he was a young boy, so the people did not have much hope for him, and he became the great Nitziv. Now, he became the great Natsiv, a massive Talmud Chacham. If you look at his story, and keep in mind, remember, that he wrote this forum in those days without the help of all of what we have today with the technology that you can access forum in a second from all over. He had most of it from memory. You look through his forum. He was a massive, massive Talmud Chacham. He was a massive genius. We can't comprehend how a person could have at his fingertips all that Torah and the Mechadish, the Chadushim, that he was Mechadish. And without all of the help and writing it by himself, without, without all of the technology, writing it himself, these Chadushim, most of these for him, he had from memory and, and unbelievable, not only the Kiyos, but the Chadushim. So Torah is different. Torah is different than other disciplines. What is the Yisaita Dabar? So the Chassam Seifer says that the reason you need Siata Dishmaya to retain your learning, Lok Megirsa, he says because Torah is a Dabar Ruchni. And a Dabar Ruchni does not dwell in the Oilam Agashmi. Torah is Ruchni. So it's part of the Olam HaRuchni. It does not easily find a place. It, it does not easily find an abode in the Olam HaGashmi. You need Siyat HaDashmaya for that. You need special Siyat HaDashmaya. The question arises, well, if that's the case, why doesn't it apply to the Etzim learning? 
Why is it only the retention that we say that we say it's Yat Hashemayim? Why it's not the Yigi itself to learn, to understand? We say that Yagata Matzal Sitami. Yagata Matzal Sitami. So why don't we say the same thing? Why should Yigi itself, effort itself be sufficient? Why isn't it totally on Siyat Why is it only memory? But perhaps the Pshat is as follows. As the Bach explains, the Rotson of the Rebbein Shalom is, is that we should be connected, attach ourselves, we should be mechubed to the Rebbein Shalom through the Limit HaTayra. Through our Limit HaTayra, with a desire to draw close to the Rebbein Shalom and to become connected to him, that is his desire. So if a person is Yagati, if he's miyageya for Torah, not because he's just miyageya, because he wants to work hard, because he wants a good grade, because he wants a ashtela, because he wants kovod. If he's miyageya with limit ha to learn the Torah of the Rabbeinu Shalom, has a connection with the Rabbeinu Shalom. So therefore he's given an understanding of Torah. Now, to retain the Torah, even when he's not learning the Torah, even when he's not miyage in Torah, even when he is not exhibiting this overwhelming desire to be mechumer to the rebellion through limit atayra through yegia b'lei v'nefesh, that requires the alta d'shmaya because at this point now he is a guf hagashmi. So how does he get connected to the ruchni when he's miyage and learning? So now that desire to draw close, that desire to come close and putting that effort to learn the Torah, to become attached to the Rabbeinu Shalom, he has an understanding of the Torah. But when he's not, to retain the Torah, to be a, a vessel, a clay kibble for the retention of the Torah, what allows him to retain it that way? That's the Yat The, the Rabbeinu Shalom gives a matana to those who have that desire, have that overwhelming, that we've down to the Rabbeinu Shalom, <coughs> you beg the Rabbeinu Shalom, then you become as the Bach says, a Merkava for the Shekhinah. If a person has that overwhelming desire, he becomes like a Merkava to the Shekhinah, then he's like the Tik HaSefer. Matzilin Tik HaSefer, Ima Sefer. He becomes part of the Sefer. He becomes like the Tik of the Sefer. And therefore the Torah rests in him. He's a Merkava for the Shekhinah. The Torah is resting in him. His, his Guf Agashmi becomes now a chelek of a dover ruchni, and the Torah is able to rest and dwell in him, and he has this retention of the Torah. So liman Torah and retention of the Torah is not dependent only on intellectual capabilities. It's a voida. It's a voida Hashem. It's serving the rebbeinu shalom. It's a desire to come close and attach ourselves to the rebbeinu shalom, and then we are given understanding of Torah and a retention in Torah that is a gift from the Rabbi Nishalayla. I know somebody who is a Baki Bishas. He's an absolute Baki Bishas. You can test him anywhere. I'll tell you exactly where it is throughout Shas. He can do the pin test, and he's done it many times, the pin test, and he can tell exactly what word it lands out on. He's an absolute Baki Bishas backwards and forwards. People claim he has a photogra- photographic memory. He maintains that he doesn't. He maintains that he doesn't. It comes through hard work, through Yagiya, through Hazora. The fact is, he is a Baki Bishas. He remembers everything. But if you give him a phone number, He'll ask you for what, what's so-and-so's phone number. You'll tell him his phone number, he'll have to write it down. He's not going to be able to remember that phone number. The limit of Taira, understanding in Taira, beyond intellectual capabilities, the comprehension, the retention, aside from the intellectual capabilities that are common lahavda with other disciplines. But Taira, Limana Taira is an Avaitas, Avaitas Hashem. And through Avaitas Hashem, we can be given Siyata Deshmaya, 
where can be given a matana of Tehram, which shall be Zaycha.